that is Dale Hollow right there. That is wintertime bass fishing. I'm Jay Wallen. We're here on Dale Hollow Lake, getting ready to do a little bit of wintertime smallmouth, maybe largemouth, but hopefully smallmouth bass fishing. It's cold. I haven't quite got my breath yet this morning. Kind of, kind of cold. But it's all right. We're gonna catch some bass today. Uh, let's just go fishing. See what happens. We got a tournament that I'm actually pre-fishing for. Um, so we're gonna see if we can't get a pattern dialed in. See if we can't figure something out. Uh, and we'll bring it all to you. Let's go. A large mouth. But for sure that was a small mouth. Not a bad little guy. Boy, he ate that Picasso little spotty, little tungsten jig. Nice. It's a pretty long fish. Big small mouth. And of course, a boat shut the thing right behind me. He ain't ready. This is a big one. He comes up again. Oh, what a tank. Oh, he just spit up a big shad. Okay, come on. It's net time for you. Oh, oh wow. Look at that pig. Oh my God, my heart's racing, man. <laughs> that is Dale Hollow right there. That is wintertime bass fishing. Little uh, Picasso, little spotty uh, tungsten quarter ounce jig green pumpkin gosh man that g loomis nrx handled that fish like a champ i gotta get this fish back in the water 22 and a quarter inches that is my person that ties my personal best length smallmouth. awesome awesome fish wish it was tournament day but it's not uh, i'm going to continue going down here see if i can get a few more bites on that jig and I'm not trying to set the hook on anything else. That right there has made my day. Yes, yes, I'm jacked up. Oh, that is a fat fish. I don't know what it weighs. You know, that's a that's a five pounder. You know, he could go a little heavier. But let's let's get her back. Let's get this fish. Well, <laughs> there she goes. He's got it. Spit it. Oh. Oh. Oh God. This could be another big one.
You know, this time of year, these smallmouth will get right up on these gray shell banks. Um, you know, especially where the uh, where the channel runs in next to the bank. That's where all the bait. That's where all the fish is sitting. Um, and so what I'm doing, you know, I'm just I'm fishing 17 to 20 foot deep. I'm throwing this little quarter ounce jig. And the thing about this lake is you just have to fish slow. That's all there is to it. Like, if you get in a hurry, you're not going to get the bites. Um, you've got to fish slow. You've got to slow yourself down. You know, I'm focusing on the points. That seems to be, you know, the first 50 yards before the point, the next 50 yards after the point, you know, and then just kind of work your way down the bank. But, uh, you know, I've already caught a couple good fish. Uh, I'm not really trying to set the hook on anything else. You know, I'm pre-fishing. I very well may fish here for the tournament tomorrow. And so I don't want to sore mouth a bunch of fish. Uh, if I get, you know, I'm, I'm really just trying to get bit right now. And, you know, if I can get bit and, and shake these fish off, it's just nice to know, nice to know that there's some fish here. Um, but they've definitely, you know, they concentrate on the points and the, the gray shale banks you know steep 45 degree sloping banks like what you see in front of me here um, that's kind of the ticket you know and and some banks are better than others and you just have to find those you know you just have to work enough of those channel banks to know uh, you know kind of get it narrowed down so that you can see which ones are producing and which ones aren't um, I'm throwing really light line I'm throwing you know, 20 pound braid with a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. You know, the, this water here is pretty clear. These fish get pressured. Uh, the lighter the line you can get away with, the better you're going to be, uh, especially in December. So, and you know, that 10 pound test line, it does fine. That's a 10 pound Sunline Sniper. It just handled a, a 22 inch, five pound smallmouth, no problem. So, um, you know, go don't don't be afraid to go light but you know keep your drag to where you can pull some out because these fish will break your line if you don't have your drag set right wind's kind of playing havoc with me right now but that's okay we need some wind wind is a good thing uh, this time of year a little light breeze like this that can really bring those fish up uh, make them a little bit easier to catch Goodness, he's mad. Pretty fish. Golly, you think you didn't want that Picasso? <sighs> Little spotty jig. That's a pretty smallmouth. Gosh. You know, that right there is not a big smallmouth, but he was up here real shallow. It's two o'clock in the day. The, the water's warmed up a little bit. The sun's been out. You know pull some of these fish up a little bit shallow uh, to feed another nice little smallmouth eating the jig today that uh, that Picasso little spotty it's uh it's just really compact it's quarter ounce it's all tungsten uh, and man that thing that thing gets bit that's all there is to it nice fish
There's number one on the board. Eighth the uh, eighth the jig, of course, seventeen and a quarter. Not bad. Not a bad start. Need four more. Let's go. Well, that was awesome. That, uh, that was pretty much uh, all the video footage I was able to get. Uh, we had some rain move in, and uh, it just got impossible for me to film anymore. Uh, so I didn't get to quite wrap that up. So we're going to wrap it up right here in the office. Uh, just wanted to show you guys a couple of the baits that I was throwing, uh, some of the rods, and, and just my general setups, uh, and how I was fishing uh, for some of those fish on Del Hollow. Uh, all my fish, with the exception of one, came on this right here. Uh, this is a little spotty tungsten jig. Uh, it's a quarter ounce. It's just a round ball uh, jig head. It's got a couple of little, uh, little fiberglass uh, weed guards right here. Those things are awesome. Uh, it's just two prongs. It's not the old school uh, with all the, all the strands. It's just two strands. Uh, and they're very durable, and they do actually work. Um, Pair that up with a Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Crawl, uh, just a green pumpkin copper. You know, just I just wanted something extremely natural. Those fish at Del Hollow, you know, they're so hard to fool. That water's so clear. Uh, you really got to go with some natural baits uh, if if you expect to get bit. Now I was fishing this uh, anywhere from eight uh, all the way out to thirty feet deep. You know, I'm fishing thirty feet deep with a a quarter ounce jig you know you really have to fish slow uh 10 pound sunline fluorocarbon that's as heavy as as uh really i would recommend going with something like this uh if you wanted to get more bites uh you might go to eight pound test uh even six, six pound test will be pushing it i think uh but eight pound test will be good i went with 10 just because i was in a tournament and i just you know I really wanted some extra insurance there with that 10 pound test. So I've got that 10 pound fluorocarbon leader and it's tied off to a main line of 20 pound Power Pro. This is the super slick. Uh, 20 pound test is all you need. Uh, so, you know, I've got a, a leader length of about three or four feet, something like that. You just don't want it going up into the, uh, into the reel. You don't want to reel your knot uh, back and forth up into the reel. Uh, throwing that on an NRX 872S, that's a 7 foot 3 uh, heavy spinning rod. Uh, and that thing is fantastic for little finesse jigs. Uh, you know, anything that you want to throw that's a little heavier, but it's still something you might want to throw on a, on a spinning rod, uh, that 7.3 heavy, I'm just telling you, it's a beefcake of a spinning rod. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Now, this next bait, uh, I actually didn't catch any fish um, in practice, and I didn't catch any fish in the tournament on this, but this is one that historically 
has been really good for me on Dale Hollow. It's uh, it's just a little eighth ounce uh, swim bait jig head, and it's got a little 2.75. I think this is a Rage Swimmer, um, but you know any kind of little small swim bait like that, uh, it's got a real natural appearance to it. Again, same thing, 10 pound test, uh, Sunline fluorocarbon, and then I'm going to a 20 pound Power Pro uh, mainline uh, leader material. Now that rod I was throwing on an 852S uh, GLX from G Loomis. Uh, the only difference between that and the NRX, it's the same uh, action. They're both heavy rods. The 852 is a seven foot one. Uh, so I was throwing that swim bait on the 852. Uh, seven foot one rod and then the 872 uh, is the same action it's the nrx blank but it's seven foot three uh, so those are the two rods and reels that i was using uh, you know i was really targeting uh, some of the points you know this time of year those small mouth are going to go and set up on those points a couple of the large mouth that you saw me catch uh, were either on stumps uh, pretty deep stumps too like 25 uh, 30 feet you know it's pretty deep stumps uh, some of the smallmouth were hanging off those gray shale banks. There, it doesn't really look like hard rock. Uh, it looks like a bunch of loose rock and stuff like that. Uh, but those fish will hang out deeper off the ends of those points and they'll stack up. And really my whole method was just going from point to point, you know, point hopping until you found, uh, you know, one that was holding some fish. Uh, you know, and sometimes, you know, in doing that, you'll find stretches of bank that are producing and it's funny how you can go right back to some of those banks and catch another fish. You know, you catch one, fish a little while, come off of it, uh, and then go back to it. You know, go back and, and fish that bank. Uh, a lot of times the, those smallmouth will kind of regroup. I don't know if they scatter when you catch one and it kind of spooks them off. Uh, but if you give them a few minutes, you know, especially in the wintertime, those fish are going to come right back to those spots. Uh, they're there for a reason. And typically once you find those spots... You can come back to them year after year after year uh, and, and catch you know some of the, some of these same fish every year. But uh, that's it. That's my Dale Hollow experience. A uh, little bit of pre-fishing on the front end. Uh, and then, like I said, we had a tournament. I was just able to get four fish. A fifth fish would have got me paid. So, you know, once again, those limits are always so important. You know, even if you have to slow down, you know, maybe I should have thrown a Ned rig. Uh, you know, I did make a big move in the day. Maybe I should have just stayed put. It's hard to say. Uh, but nonetheless, I didn't get it done. Couldn't quite fill out my limit. But uh, that's fishing. That's the way it goes, especially on Dale Hollow. Uh, that's it. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. Please give me the subscribe. And uh, my goal this year is to bring you guys weekly content just like this. We're going to be traveling the country, fishing tournaments. Uh, the weeks I'm not fishing tournaments, you know, we'll release a... Uh, like a technique specific video or maybe some rigging tips, uh, tackle tips, that kind of thing. So we're going to be doing this all year. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you all in the next one.